Greetings from Tokyo. This is Daisuke, and I hope all of you are doing very well today. It is now December 20th, 2018. My goodness, uh, time flies when you are having fun. And so I'm sure that many of you are busy with the holiday season, maybe getting ready for things, maybe things are becoming a little bit hectic with work or things winding down at your office or or otherwise with uh, the things that you have to do before the end of the year. And so I hope that whatever the situation may be for you, that it is a very happy one and that you are not too stressed out and that uh, ultimately you will have time to spend uh, with your family and friends and loved ones and also spend time the way you want, uh, maybe relaxing and eating good food, enjoying good company, um, uh, being with uh, friends, uh, falling in love and uh, Uh, maybe amongst that, uh, watching a good movie or two. So uh, anyway, I hope that this season uh, sees you well. And uh, with that, my friends, I'd like to talk to you now again about another thing that I would like to see from the Criterion Collection in 2019. So uh, again, this is now the end of 2018. And as always, at the end of the year, um, it is usually time for me to think back on the year and to think back on the year that was, and also to think about the future and what the future has in store and what it could potentially hold uh, for us who are uh, admirers and fans of the Criterion Collection. So now is a great time to think about the upcoming year, the new year, uh, 2019. Um, uh, What is that? Uh, What what does Jack Nicholson say in the film uh, Batman, uh, Tim Burton's Batman? What does he say in the beginning? He says, um, uh, yeah, he says, Eckhart, uh, think about the future, right? And so I think this is a great time to think about the future and uh, maybe think about what we would like to see from the Criterion Collection, at least what I would like to see from the Criterion Collection. Again, as much as I love the Criterion Collection, and as you can see from uh, what's behind me here, I really love the Criterion Collection. Um, I say this with much respect and with much love and uh, with nothing uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to sound rude towards the Criterion Collection. I hope I'm not. I'm just saying it as a real fan and um, just uh, uh, as a fan, just uh, uh, letting uh, you know what I would like to see from the Criterion Collection. So without further ado, let me tell you what today's theme is. So today's theme is basically this, right? And I think all of you know what this is. So this is a laser disc. And uh, in particular, this is a Criterion Collection laser disc. And uh, this is part of the Criterion Collection laser disc collection that was um, uh, that were released starting from around the mid 1980s. So these laser discs, of course, were back in the day when laser disc format was alive and well. There were laser disc machines that were being sold uh, at retail, and so the laser discs were a home video format to watch films on. At the time, they were quite expensive, concurrent with VHS, but VHS was the cheaper alternative. And um, and for me, anyway, growing up, I was uh, almost entirely reliant on VHS. I hardly ever had any Laserdisc when I was a kid growing up. It was only later when I got into college that I realized the full potential of Laserdiscs. And by that time, I think the, the popularity of Laserdiscs was already beginning to wane. Still, uh, this was before DVD and this was before Blu-ray, so um, uh, the Laserdiscs were really the uh, uh, top of the line format. They had so much uh, space and uh, especially some of the uh, specially formatted discs, you know, they could have a lot of space to fit in. Uh, So that means you could have a lot of supplementary features. And in fact, the Criterion Collection began its um, 
its sort of tradition of providing a lot of special features with each film. Uh, it began that tradition with the laser discs, and in fact, it was Criterion's release, I think, of King Kong, where we had the first audio commentary to a film. And so now it's commonplace, of course. Now we get um, uh, a Criterion DVD or Blu-ray, and it's the opposite is true, right? It, if it doesn't have a commentary, it feels like it, it's a little bit bereft of something. Um, so I think, at least, I feel like I'm 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 a a bit spoiled perhaps because I, I've come to expect uh, nothing but the best from Criterion. Well, they were working hard from the get-go with these laser discs and so the laser discs were uh, and they well they do they form a real bedrock important aspect to Criterion's history of uh, really fundamental. Um, they provided all these really interesting films that were presented in a well thought out way. They were spine numbered as well, so it had that collector's mentality about it. And they had lovely cover art, or at least they tried to, and that, that cover art, uh, um, that the cover art um, uh, aesthetic, I think, developed over time. But there was that, that aura there, the, the, you know, the idea of this being something to own and to collect. And I think without the laser discs, then we wouldn't have had the current collection as we have it today. So, actually, I think that um, I am very grateful to Criterion for the efforts that it made towards the laser discs collection. Of course, it wasn't perfect, and there were many aspects of the laser discs that were a little bit off. Um, there were certain issues with respect to spine numbering. Uh, there were also issues with respect to uh, certain uh, unintended duplication of catalog numbers and the like, or mistakes of that sort. And so, uh, these have be these uh, mistakes or these little oversights have accumulated over time, such that the Criterion Collection Laserdisc Collection is sometimes a little bit difficult to fully comprehend because there are some uh, anomalies. Uh, there are some spine numbers, for instance, that are not used because maybe a, a release that was planned ended up not being uh, uh, fulfilled. So therefore, you didn't, you have a, a, a like a, a jump between a laser disc spine number and another laser spine number is something, maybe something uh, was planned to be released here, but it ended up not being released for whatever reason. So that spine number ended up not being used. So you have these gaps in the in the collection that are a little bit, um, uh, a little bit frustrating from the point of view of a co of a collector, but purely understandable uh, in terms of uh, criterion and and it was just tr it was pioneering way back then and it was forging new ground and so uh, of course they were gonna uh, run into some difficulty I mean that that goes without saying and they still overcame it and they grew from that and they understood what they needed to do and so now we have the lovely spine numbered DVDs and blu-rays that we know and love today and so uh, I think that the laser discs uh, are in itself um, they, they are so important to Criterion's history, and so I love the laser discs, and I think I've shown my laser disc collection in some videos. I've been very fortunate, very fortunate, to have been able to collect and gather the laser discs over time, and I'm very proud of that, and I will continue to be proud of that um, because, as I say, the laser discs are fundamental to uh, the Criterion collection as we know it and love it today. Okay, so why am I mentioning the laser discs then? Well, it's because of this. Because over the course of the year, uh, we have seen some uh, titles that have been released by the Criterion Collection that used to be laser discs. And so this is very exciting. So, for instance, uh, right, we had Magnificent Ambersons that was released. So, Magnificent Ambersons used to be a laser disc. So now it's a lovely Blu ray. Um, we also had, if you recall, a lovely Blu-ray of The Princess Bride, right? Well, The Princess Bride used to be a laser disc. We also had a very nice um, Blu-ray of the film Shampoo. Have you seen that yet, Shampoo? That's a really interesting film. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts for those of you who have seen it. It's very interesting. And this used to be a, a Criterion Collection laser disc as well. 
And then we also had, let's see, oh yes, of course, the recent release of Some Like It Hot. Well, Some Like It Hot also used to be a really interesting um, Criterion Collection Laserdisc. This is the uh, box set, so it comes in this nice, huge box here. And here's another box set, but it's for a different film. This is for uh, Sex, Lies, and Videotape. So this was also a, a Laserdisc, and now it has been released in a very interesting uh, Blu-ray. And then we also had, earlier in the year, right, if you recall, the film Midnight Cowboy. Well, Midnight Cowboy was also a Laserdisc back in the day, and now we have it on Blu-ray. So this is all very exciting. And this is part of what I want to say, which is I would love to see Criterion in 2019 try to get back some of those Laserdiscs that uh, are in the Criterion Collection, Laserdisc Collection. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean uh, there are a number of titles in the Criterion Collection, Laserdisc Collection um, that do not appear in the current collection. There are some that do, of course. So for example, um, uh, what is it, films like uh, Brazil or used to be a Laserdisc. Now that's a, a wonderful uh, Blu-ray. It used to be a really thick DVD set, right? Tokyo Olympiad is the same thing. Uh, that used to be a Laserdisc, and now it's, a, it's in the Olympics box set. Um, you also have uh, The Rock. The Rock was a, a Laserdisc, and now it's a very popular Criterion Collection DVD. Um, Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon was a Criterion Collection Laserdisc, too, and that's the last, actually, Criterion Collection spine-numbered Laserdisc before the uh, format was uh, abandoned. And so that also is a, a Criterion Collection DVD. So, and, and the list goes on. Uh, Tootsie, um, uh, Rebecca, um, and uh, The Killer, Hard Boiled, Shortcuts, uh, Dead Ringers, though that fell out of print, uh, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So Chasing Amy. Uh, and so there are many, many titles that used to be Criterion Collection Laserdiscs that are now currently DVDs or Blu-rays. But there are a number of titles, however, that are Criterion Laserdiscs, but have not yet been upgraded, so to speak to the DVD or Blu-ray format. So this year we saw a number of them upgraded, so to speak, which is a really nice thing uh, because it seems to suggest that perhaps Criterion is conscious of trying to get as many of the laser discs back into the collection as possible. But I'd love to see more. I'd love to see more in 2019. And of course, I am very cognizant of the realities uh, in other words, I know that uh, Criterion's decisions to release a film on a Blu-ray um, is not uh, out of pure, uh, it's, it's not pure whimsical choice. I understand that there are realities with respect to uh, licensing, uh, negotiating royalties, making sure that you get the rights from the respective licensor in order to be able to license out or to, to, uh, be, uh, to distribute and manufacture these discs as the licensee. Um, sometimes the intellectual property rights aren't available. Uh, or sometimes uh, there are other practical issues. Perhaps it's not a, a commercially viable uh, thing to try to uh, uh, promote. Uh, so, uh, you know, I understand these uh, practical realities. And so maybe it's not worth Criterion's time right now to think about releasing some of the as of yet uh, non upgraded uh, laser discs. Uh, but I actually, I do think. However, that there are some titles that I think would be really great as uh, as uh, current Blu-rays. You know, there are laser discs that would be really great in terms of upgrades. So, for example, two thousand one was a Criterion Collection laser disc. Um, Taxi Driver, uh, Raging Bull, Scor the Scorsese films, those are Criterion Collection Laserdiscs. Um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, um, that was a, a Laserdisc, a uh, Criterion Laserdisc. Um, the early Hitchcock films, those were Criterion Laserdiscs as well, so Blackmail, um, Young and Innocent, uh, Secret Agent, uh, Sabotage. Uh, so those were 
also Criterion Collection Laserdiscs. So it would be lovely to see the early Hitchcock films uh, back in the collection, so to speak. Um, there are also some other interesting ones. And of course, I know I, I can probably uh, guess that th getting these in the Criterion Collection might be very difficult to do. So for example, Pulp Fiction was a, a Criterion Collection Laserdisc. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Boogie Nights, uh, the Paul Thomas Anderson film, Boogie Nights was a Criterion Collection laser disc. So maybe these films uh, might be difficult to acquire uh, on the part of the Criterion Collection. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but this is all to say that there are still a number of titles that have yet to be uh, upgraded, so to speak, uh, to the current collection. And I would love to see Criterion try to get some more of them back. I would love to see that. Again, it would just show a certain maybe respect uh, towards the Laserdiscs. Again, uh, the titles in the Laserdisc collection have a certain, I don't know, what is, what it, a certain, what is it, a je ne sais quoi, um, a certain charm about them, an old school charm. Uh, they deserve respect. And so it, I think uh, nothing would uh, uh, suggest that respect more than seeing them uh, resurrected, so to speak, and uh, returned to the collection. I'd love to see them. Of course, there are some titles that are uh, heavily rumored to come back, and these used to be Criterion Laserdiscs. So for instance, John Waters' Polyester has been rumored to uh, be uh, in the planning stages to come back, and perhaps we, we might even see it in 2019. Um, also, the Kurosawa film, uh, Dersu Uzala, uh, was also uh, rumored. So who knows, maybe that might be, that's a Criterion Collection Laserdisc too, so who knows, maybe we might see Dersu Uzala. I'd love to see that. Um, my personal favorite, uh, I would love to see uh, Pink Flamingos, and I'd love to see Akira, the Japanese uh, anime film, Akira. I'd love to see that in the Criterion Collection. That would be really great. Um, also, 2001 A Space Odyssey would be great. Um, North by Northwest would be great. Um, oh, the James Bond films as well. Dr. No from Russian with Love and Goldfinger. Uh, that would be great. Although I, I, I probably, uh, I, I don't think that will, that is a very realistic um, uh, possibility to see the James Bond films in the Criterion Collection, but who knows? Who knows? You know, stranger things have happened. Uh, so uh, you know, never say never. <laughs> never say never again. So anyway, uh, so that is my feeling. Is I'd love to see more of the laser discs being uh, resurrected and returned to the collection, the current collection in 2019, uh, even if it's one title, even if it's two titles, even if it's 10 titles, um, the more the merrier, I say, but even one would be, uh, uh, you know, a cause for great celebration indeed. So Criterion, for your consideration, please, I'd love to see more uh, of the Laserdisc titles return to the collection in lovely Blu-ray presentations. You've already given us these great uh, returns of these titles that we see this year and I am very grateful for your efforts because having these titles I think is a real treat um, and uh, it's just showing again the breadth and scope of Criterion's mission in terms of what it's trying to do with its own film catalog and what it's trying to do in terms of uh, showing uh, consumers like you and me exactly the potential of these films um, and just showing us the uh, real beauty of cinema and uh, you know if you have the magnificent Emersons and you watch it and you um, and uh, you know you're enjoying it uh, you know again it's uh, it's a lovely film and we had it as a criterion collection laser disc and uh, of course it was great uh, it was great cause for celebration uh, when it was first announced because of course it's the great Orson Welles film but also it, it represents a, a, a pretty significant um, uh, event because it is a, a Criterion Collection Laserdisc. So, um, anyway, my friends, um, 
what do you think? Uh, would you like to see more Criterion Collection Laserdiscs uh, return to the collection, like we did with Magnificent Ambersons and the like? Um, if so, uh, what films uh, of the Laserdisc collection would you like to see return? And I think this might be, uh, uh, this is probably directed to those of you who are into the Criterion Collection Laserdiscs. So please feel free to let me know uh, what you would like to see return. And then for those of you uh, for whom the Laserdiscs are maybe um, a new thing or something that you're not necessarily familiar with, uh, that's perfectly fine too. Um, I do have a video uh, somewhere uh, that I made a while back showing my uh, Criterion Collection Laserdiscs, so uh, you can feel free to look at that if you want. Uh, but also, if you want to ask me any questions, uh, I'd be very happy to uh, try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, I guess uh, I should end on this, is that uh, for anyone for whom the Laserdiscs are a new thing, or um, um, for anyone who may be on the fence as to maybe wanting to get a laser disc or not, my suggestion is um, even if you don't have a player, even if you don't really fully understand or uh, maybe you don't feel like you want to get into collecting all of the laser discs, now that's perfectly fine. I, I, I'm very happy with that approach because laser disc collecting is can be quite complicated actually um, but I do recommend uh, at the very least getting just one laser disc and just having it, uh, it it's it's just something to have uh, and you can find them rather cheap uh, you know there's a great site called LDDB.com again that's LDDB.com laser disc database LDDB.com and uh, just look for uh, or if you can't find it just uh, search for laserdiscdatabase.com online and it'll come up. There are many sellers there that sell uh, Criterion Laserdiscs at uh, pretty good prices. Um, there's also eBay. Uh, of course we have to be careful when we shop on eBay to be sure that uh, we're getting uh, a good and authentic item and that it's well packed and everything like that. There are also flea markets and also stores um, uh, that still sell uh, laser discs. And so my suggestion is just get one and you don't have to spend all this money to get one. You know, you should uh, be able to get uh, a fairly decent one in a good condition for maybe 10 bucks um, maybe you can get one cheaper uh, and just you know uh, it, it's just one disc but I think it's something to have as a, a kind of a, uh, a memento of criterion history I don't know if that's the right word but it, it's a it's a, a living artifact if you like it, it's it's living breathing um, evidence of criterion's rich history and because the laser discs are truly uh, truly rich history of the Criterion Collection. It's truly breathtaking and it's awe-inspiring. Uh, you know, one of these days I, I want to go through them one at a time with you. Um, because there are some <laughs> titles there that are just mind-blowing and the way that they're presented is just mind-blowing. Uh, but just getting one disc is just, uh, I think, an indication of um, kind of a, how should I say, I mean, you have a piece of history criterion history there on your shelf or next to your TV or wherever you decide to, uh, uh, to put it. And also some of the cover uh, art is really lovely. So some people, I know, some people take the, the sleeves and they frame them, they put them on the wall and they frame them. They don't play the discs, but uh, maybe they store the disc elsewhere. And that's a good idea as well. Um, they are really nice pieces of art as well. Uh, so then my suggestion is, uh, for those of you out there, consider getting just one uh, laser disc, and you don't have to pay exorbitant amount of money, just a nice cheap, maybe $10 or less laser disc, and right there you have a piece of history, and it's something that you can show your collector friends, and, and uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's another indication of, uh, of uh, appreciation of the Criterion Collection. Okay, uh, I think I've... Uh, um, talked uh, long enough. So if you have any questions or comments, of course, please feel free to let me know uh, in the comments section below, and I will do my best to address them. And until we meet again, my friends, uh, once again, I hope you are uh, happy and healthy and doing very, very, very well. Um, and uh, 
for those of you who are busy this time of year. I hope things calm down and I hope you get a chance to uh, relax and take a breather and enjoy uh, cinema and enjoy life. Uh, Carpe diem, seize the day. Um, O captain, my captain. And until we meet again, my friends, peace and cheers. (laughs) 